Planners are more popular than ever. If you love planners and enjoy scheduling your daily life, there's an Etsy shop that carry all kinds of planner stickers and pages that you will love. It's called Digi Planners Design on Etsy. It's all one word on Etsy.com. They offer digital budget sheets, money challenge sheets, holiday stickers, great tracker pages, password keeper pages, and much, much more. These are all digital and very easy to download from your computer, print, and incorporate into your planner. Right now, enjoy their Black Friday and Cyber Week sale at Digi Planners Design on Etsy or digiplannersdesigns.com. That's D-I-G-I plannersdesigns.com. This is a store-wide sale on Christmas gifts, Christmas label stickers, planners, and more. Early sales and discounts from 25% off all the way up to 60% and get your holiday gifts, Christmas gifts, and more at Digi Planners Design on Etsy or digiplannersdesigns.com. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show podcast. Broadcasting from sunny South Florida, Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome to the program, everyone. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. You know, I got to tell you, the mainstream corporate media are low lives. They are just terrible, terrible people. I know that's not news to a lot of you, but what they're doing today is making me physically ill, and they're all doing this. This god-awful massacre that happened in Wisconsin with the Mm. Christmas parade. What is it, Waukesha? Waukesha. Waukesha. That was a massacre. And the mainstream media, the mainstream media are referring to it as a crash and as an accident. You know, everything about that story that came out of the beginning was not true. He was fleeing a knife attack. Remember they said that? Yeah. He was leaving a domestic dispute. None of that was true. He had this incident with the girlfriend. That was what he was out on bail for. It didn't just happen. And and, And obviously we don't know for a fact everything that happened, but it was not an accident. And- a child died yesterday. One of those who was injured, a child died yesterday. Yeah. There were 30 people hospitalized. So now it's six deaths. There uh, were 30 people hospitalized, some with very serious injuries, and somebody else may pass. And, and the media, they've just moved on from it, and it's, it's really it's, it's upsetting. They don't even care. They want it to go away. Now, even to- the police involved said that this was a targeted – purposeful attack well it yeah it's not an accident he was not fleeing anything he went there with intent and what's and yes yeah he went with intent yeah and it yeah. what's what's going on in this country right now we've had we have three things that are happening right the rittenhouse verdict the waukesha massacre and today we got some very good news mm-hmm. these three monsters yeah. that murdered Aubrey were convicted today, which is very, very good news. But we have these three incidents, and they're both political. Oh, I'm sorry, all th- not both, three. All three are political. Mm-hmm. There's different layers of politics, like this no bail and cashless bail and all these things that are being talked about with the massacre case. There is a racial division issue <laughs> With these things, and let me tell you, um, that that verdict today in Georgia with these three guys in the Aubrey case is such such good news. The, it is these 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 three good old boy racist. I I hate. I don't know what they were thinking. Well, I mean, I really don't know what. And then what they said on the news today, which was really shocking. Was the prosec- well, This happened in February of 2020, and they were not arrested until May. The prosecutor was not going to charge them, mm-hmm. and then this idiot who filmed it, the video surfaced of that he made, and that's what did them in. Once the video went, it got it got online. Once the video went viral, he arrested them. He had no other choice. If this guy hadn't, the scary thing is, if this guy, this shows the importance of video. It was important with Kyle. If there was no video with Kyle, Kyle probably would have been gone to jail. If there was no video with these three guys, they would have been acquitted 
or they mm-hmm. never would have been charged. Maybe. The, that's yeah. what they said. The video is what did them in and, and why they had to be charged because there was video. Well, and yeah. It's a video world. Yeah. Everything's on video and, now. And the guy that videotaped it, he's one of the three that's going away. And I don't know what they that were That is a good, good thing. Yeah, it is. And, you know, I hate to agree with Al Sharpton because Al Sharpton's not a nice man, okay? But he, I, I watched the... Benjamin Crump, Al Sharpton press conference after the Georgia verdict today. And I think it was Al Sharpton. It might have been Benjamin Crump, but I think it was Al Sharpton referred to those three guys as a lynch mob. And that's exactly what it was. And, you know, I saw the one guy, the main guy, I saw him testifying the other day. And let me tell you what was sick about that. I've seen a lot of high profile trials on television over the years. I've watched a lot of people on the witness stands testifying and everything. That guy believed that what he did was right. He had no remorse. It was like Ted Bundy, you know, Ted Bundy, the serial killer. Mm -hmm. He he was crazy and and he and Ted Bundy said it was the girl's fault that he killed him because they all willingly got into his car. Yeah. And and when I saw that guy testifying in his own defense in the Aubrey trial. I could see in his eyes that he had no remorse, that he thinks that he was in the right. And, you know, um, Georgia's the Deep South. We've moved beyond these er- these things for the most part. But so- there's still there's still people well, in this country that are, oh, are, yeah. are racist. But I, wanna, well, I just want to say at, this about, yeah. the, about okay. the verdict, okay? Because when Al Sharpton and Crump and all, all the people came out, um, they thanked a lot of people, but they did. I didn't hear them thank the jury. And th- this is the thing, okay? The system worked. The system worked. Um, this story about the prosecutor who w- wasn't going to bring charges, that I did not know that until today. Uh, you know, the Rittenhouse trial has taken up so much of the news. The Aubrey case has been kind of on the back burner in the news. So, you know, don't know that case as well. But, um, and that that's crazy. But- they were brought to justice. So the system worked, you know, racial injustice, racial injustice, you know, the, in the old days in the fifties, sixties, and before that, when there was, you know, when the, when these things happened all the time, the second injustice is when men who were clearly guilty would be acquitted, you know, like in that, you know, in these Mississippi burning trials that right. they made the movies into the system worked in this case and the jury re- uh, rendered a guilty verdict and and that's a that's a good thing. And we're not living in the fifties and sixties anymore. Well, thankfully, sort of the system worked because they had video evidence. But it still if worked, there, right? But if in the end, but if there was no video, the system would not have worked. They would have gotten away with it. Yeah. But I I see these three men are similar to the three men that were chasing Kyle, and I see Kyle similar to Aubrey. And if Aubrey had had a gun on him, he might be alive today. He might have been able to defend himself, but he did not because he wasn't carrying anything and he couldn't defend himself. Kyle had a gun and he was able to defend himself because he had three guys chasing him too. So that's the difference in those things. I'm not saying, you know, one way or the other, I'm just making an observation that there's a lot of similarities with these two trials. Um, they try to make Kyle's trial like a racial thing and it's nothing racial. Well, no, everybody was white in that About trial. that. Nothing racial good. about that. Um, this to me with Aubrey was racial. I feel, I really feel that if this Aubrey guy was white, they never would have gone after him. They wouldn't even have noticed. They wouldn't even have given a second thought. Well, I don't know. He was no, in, they he live was in, in a white guy, neighborhood. He was in the guy's got, house, Kathy. That would have been on the surveillance camera. Yeah, but I don't think they would have gone after him the same way. But you know, if you're any guy, no matter what color skin you are and you're jogging and running, um, meanwhile, he had nothing on him. He wasn't carrying anything. He hadn't stolen anything. But he had n- nothing on him. But if you're jogging, right, and three guys pull up in two trucks with a shotgun, are you going to get in your their car oh, with no. them? I mean, are you going to just willingly no. go? I mean, come no. on. They, they were. I don't know no. what the hell these guys were thinking. You can't just go up to some stranger on a street. It's not like the guy just raped and murdered their wife, their wives, okay? The guy just walked through a construction site, and, and he, he was unarmed. You don't just go up to some guy on a street and just think that you can just pull a gun on him and and he'll go with you. That's insanity. So I think well, that the right yeah. verdict was 
and was done on that. They're like two George, three George Zimmermans here. And I, I, what I wish though, because I, I was watching, we waited a little while to do the show because I wanted to see what some of the reaction was, and I wanted to watch the press conference from the verdict. And what I've not seen in the mainstream media is an acknowledgement that we're not in the 60s anymore, no. that we're in a new place, and even though there are racists who do terrible things, our our system is not racist. It used to be, it, you know, it, it used to be the system itself was racist, where guys in Georgia who did this right. would have no worries. They'd get away with it. Right. I think that's and how these we three we moved felt. beyond that, and when I, when I saw the crowd outside, and I understand that, you know, uh, Ar- Aubrey's uh, parents were there, and and I saw all of that, and and uh, you know, your heart goes out for the mother and the father. There's this terrible thing they experienced. But but I saw a lot of the activists out there, and the activist activists their whole life is active uh, being activist, and you know Al mm-hmm. Sharpton's an activist. Activists their whole life is being an activist, and they never see. The big picture because they're so involved in their battle. The act- well, they go from one case to the next. Well, the activists in front of the courthouse believe that the jury only came back with a guilty verdict because they were outside protesting. Right. And so they still believe the country is racist and that the system is racist and only the pressure being outside is what brought in these guilty verdicts. And that's that's unfortunate. And I wish – I wish some responsible people like Benjamin Crump would acknowledge that the system itself is not racist. Well, he's not going to acknowledge that because he's making too much money. But what you said there is so true because Al Sharpton came out and he basically took took credit for this verdict and that they they're marching, they're protesting, they're rioting over the last 10 years since Trayvon made this happen. He didn't thank the jury at all. And he basically took credit for this. There's still more to do, blah, blah, blah. And then he said something that really infuriated me. He said, this shows us today that not all white people are racist. I thought that was a horrible thing to say. Yeah. And it really made me realize that he really does believe all white people are racist and bigots, but not everybody, not all of them, but most of them. And that's where he's coming from now. I don't know if he really believes that or if he's just pandering to his audience because these guys make a lot of money off these things. You got to understand, you know, I understand that everybody's got to make a living, but they go from big case to big case. I mean, Benjamin Crump's at every one of these things now. And Al Sharpton, Jesse Jackson was at the trial. And I think that's a good thing that (laughs) Jesse Jackson went and sat in the, he was very quiet. He's got health problems. He just went and sat there. Um, to put a little pressure, um, maybe not pressure, but just to let the jury know, boy, this, this is a big deal. You know, Jesse Jackson's here. He goes way back to Martin Luther King and he's very well known. And, you know, there, I have no problem with that, but Al Sharpton taking credit, um, for this and, and then saying this proves not all white people are racist. I thought that was a horrible I, thing I to I say. I think the jury would have come back with a guilty verdict if not one activist was there. I agree. Now, I just want I mean, to mention— the video evidence was obvious. Yeah, I just want to mention about George Zimmerman and Trayvon. It's hard to believe that's been 10 years, but it has been. And, Isn't that awful? And, it, you know, because it got mentioned today. And that's when Benjamin Crump became well-known because Benjamin oh, yeah. Crump was the Trayvon Martin family lawyer. Um. The reason that George Zimmerman was acquitted, a lot of people don't know this, okay? And I think it's important. That was a very high-profile case, and they brought in a prosecutor from another community to prosecute it. Um, the, the, uh, the Trayvon Martin Zimmerman I- I incident happened in Sanford, Florida. They brought someone from Jacksonville, and what happened with the prosecutor from Jacksonville, they bring in these people that are like political people mm. who want to have a higher office and everything. They charged George Zimmerman with premeditated murder. They overcharged him, and probably on what, purpose. What, what happens is with with that is you know they come in with premeditated murder. That means that he planned it out in advance and everything else. If they would have charged George Zimmerman with a different type Second of murder degree. charge or something, he he probably would have been convicted. That's but right. but a, what happens in a lot of these, and I think that was on purpose. We don't. I don't know. But what happens in a lot of these high profile cases is. Um, prosecutors, they want to, they want to, it, it's, it, this is the case of a lifetime. It's going to be on TV and everything. They overcharge people for a couple of reasons. One, yeah. there's a lot of public pressure on them to charge very heavily. So they overcharge with something they can't get a conviction on, like in the Zimmerman case. 
Sometimes um, they, they want to have a big conviction. Whatever the reason is, George Zimmerman was charged with premeditated murder. He didn't plan this out in no, advance. That's and why go he there. got acquitted. Was, you know, if, yeah. Because he, they couldn't yeah. prove that he planned it. He was charged, like you said, with first degree. First degree means that you plan it, that you go there yeah. with an intent to kill. Yeah. And they couldn't prove that. And they didn't. That he give, went there with they, an intent. They, so that's why he got off. Sometimes, sometimes in these in these cases, they'll charge them with first degree and second degree and things like this, so that the jury has options. And, they, right. and he was just overcharged. And I, I think it's an important point to bring out because I think a lot of people believe. No, you're right. I that he was just that. that that was a racist verdict. What happened was he, he was charged to with premeditated murder, and it was it was a more of a crime of opportunity than than premeditated. But I, you know. Uh, let us know in the comments what you think about the Aubrey verdict. And I, I think, you know, we have these three cases going on. And the center case, which is the the Christmas parade massacre is what I'm calling it. Yeah, because it awful. was just that. And that was not an accident. Um, I, I think what uh, happened he, with— He was upset at the, yeah, at the verdict. And he got all worked up over the weekend. One of the founders of Black Lives Matter yesterday said that it was in response to the Rittenhouse verdict. Exactly. Now— MSNBC, this is being reported in multiple sources, um, and, uh, and I'll just read you the headline. There is serious talk all the way up the chain that Joy Reid is about to be fired from MSNBC because um, of the way she reacted to the verdict. And, you know, I've been – you guys know, I tell you this a lot. I've been in broadcasting for 30 years. I've been on the air. 30 years I've been on the air. Yeah. And when you're on – the air, you know, I'm on radio, I podcast when you're on television. It's not like talking to your friend in the living room. It's not like talking to a buddy in the parking lot after work. When when you are on a public forum, whether it's radio like me or podcasting or, or on television like Joy Reid, you have to be a little more responsible and, and, and restraint into what you're talking about because – you don't want to be responsible for inciting something. Right. And Joy Reid, many believe, and, and it seems that this story is true, that NBC, MSNBC management believe she may have incited the incident. And I'll tell you, I'm surprised Tiffany Cross's name's not being mentioned here either with the way she reacted on television. That's just not responsible broadcasting. And I don't think they're going to fire Joy Reid because if they fire Joy Reid over this this is this is why they're this is why it's going up the chain I, they being should debated. they should well if they they say it's going up the chain this means it's being discussed among senior management at MSNBC this is why they haven't done it if they fire Joy Reid it's them admitting that someone on their air incited this incident and that could make them responsible true. That's in their like, mind yes that's so true. so their lawyers are telling them well if you fire her if you fire her, you know, you, you, you could be, re, you know, you, you could be responsible civilly. Do you think they'll tell her to calm things down? Because let me tell you, if I was in the family members of those people, I would sue her because she incited anger. And I mean, she didn't tell anybody to go out and get in their car and mow them down. But if you heard the way she was talking during this whole Kyle Rittenhouse thing, white supremacy, this white supremacy, she's like trying to start a race war. And she, when you say things like that and you get people riled up, you have some, I'm not, she is not responsible for him getting in his car, but she might be responsible for getting him to that, to, from point A to point B mm. and getting him to think about it and getting to him to ruminate on it. And I think you could, if you're the parent, you could make that case. There's plenty of evidence of her on TV talking about it. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're going to tell her to calm down the rhetoric. Well, we'll see. Because she's a poisonous person. Well, listen, we're going to take a quick break. When we get back, there's a lot more to talk about. Do not go anywhere. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. We'll be back right after this. From author Sherry Chapman comes the book, A Killer Revisited, available on Amazon. Detective Jules Poulton is one of the best at tracking down murderers, but something beyond her experience came to Edmond, Oklahoma. When the serial killer reaches out in a cryptic letter, it reveals a government conspiracy at the highest level. Will she be able to stop an army experiment gone rogue? Find out when you read A Killer Revisited. If you love thrillers, you will love this book. With a well-thought-out plot, lots of twists and turns, it will keep you 
you engaged and captivated. This is a true thriller from beginning to end. A Killer Revisited from author Sherry Chapman. Available on Amazon. Order your copy right now. From author and veteran Lex R. Brown comes the book Grit, Grind, Grow, a guide to conquering career transition. Available on Amazon. Making a transition in life can be overwhelming, but Grit, Grind, Grow is designed to help you approach your career like an entrepreneur so that you are always adaptable and empowered to land bigger and better career offers quickly, frequently, and consistently. Each year, 250,000 members of the armed forces leave the military to reintegrate into the civilian workforce. Grit, Grind, Grow is written by a military veteran who has proven the information in this book firsthand and has empowered numerous others to replicate those successes. This is a must read for transitioning military veterans, military spouses, those currently unemployed, recent college grads, professionals of color, seasoned professionals over the age of 50, and anyone else searching for solutions and seeking better results. Order your copy right now. Grit, Grind, Grow, a guide to conquering career Career Transition from author and veteran Lex R. Brown on Amazon. Do you love movies? Who doesn't, right? Then add the Franchise Killer Podcast to your playlist right now. The Franchise Killer Podcast is a fun group of good friends that get together every week and break down movie franchises to see where they went wrong or went right. They discuss movies like Planet of the Apes, The Shining, Clash of the Titans, and all of your favorites. From cartoons to live action, sci-fi to dramas, comedies, they leave nothing off the table and they tell it like it is. Find the Franchise Killer Podcast on Apple Podcasts. Podcast, Podbean, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Google Podcast, and your favorite podcast player. Share the podcast on all of your social media so your friends can add the Franchise Killer Podcast to their playlist too. The Franchise Killer Podcast. Start listening right now. From author Jatika Six Colors Gibbs comes your next must-read book, Until Now, available on Amazon. Until Now is a book about the first 25 years of the author's life. It includes childhood trauma, abuse, and the author being forced to hide their true self, being abandoned, and many, many other things. The author's hope is to reach readers that can relate and let them know that they are not alone in their trauma. They are not at fault for the terrible things that's happened to them. They are not victims, but are survivors, and together we can get through anything. Author Jatika Six Colors Gibbs has been writing poetry since childhood and until now includes the author's life story, but also includes related poetry between chapters. Until now, from author Jatika Six Colors Gibbs. Order your copy right now on Amazon. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast. Broadcasting from sunny South Florida, Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. Make sure you follow and subscribe on whatever platform you are listening to us on. I just want to say one last thing about Joy Reid and Tiffany Cross and MSNBC. Um, we were watching after the Rittenhouse verdict. We were watching Joy Reid's show. I guess it was must have been Friday, right, when the verdict came in. And Joy Reid was off, and she was so jazzed up about everything going on. She was a guest on her own show and, and went in. The, <laughs> yeah. And then this, let me tell you what, what happened. This is, this is something when you're in broadcasting that you have to be very, very well aware of. Sometimes people get obsessed, and what happens is they get in a circle. Yeah. Like I, I've seen in, in, in talk radio, I've seen this happen so many times. People in broadcasting get connected to an activist issue, whether it's what Joy Reid and Tiffany Cross are doing or, or something else. And, they, and, they're, and then they start surrounding themselves with activists. Yeah. And what happens is they get they get in this activist bubble and they lose sight of what's really going on. They lose perspective. And Joy Reid and Tiffany Cross need to go on vacation for the rest of this year. And I don't think I like I say I don't think they're going to fire them because that would be admitting that they allowed someone to instigate violence and death on their air so that's unlikely i mean brian but they need they to go on vacation for the rest of the year imagine if tucker carlson down. talked like that about black people imagine if the roles were reversed and i feel a lot of my not a lot but 
I feel some people feel that that kind of rhetoric is okay if it's coming out of a black person and it's not okay. It's still racism. You can be racist towards other people. It's not just white against other people. It can be the opposite. And uh, anybody can be a racist and say racial things about people. And when you are on your show and you are just going off on a whole race of people and inciting this kind of anger, you know, um, it's a problem and they need to fire her. They need to fire Tiffany. Those two are really stoking these flames and whether they get rid of them or not, they will eventually dig their own grave like Martin Bashir. Eventually they will cross the line again and the network will have to get now. They, you might be right. They might say, well, we can't do it now, but you know what? We're going to do it in six months. Now let I, their contract run out. Now I want to um, share with you part of a comment that a listener left on one of my YouTube videos. I think my radio show today left me a comment, and I just give you a little background. It involves Kyle Rittenhouse did a second interview. First was Tucker. He did an interview with Ashley Banfield, who used to be with MSNBC. I don't know who she's with now, but she was with MSNBC for a long time. And she was talking to him about this photograph of him with one of the Proud Boys. And here, here's the thing, okay? I'm not going to go through the whole thing with the Proud Boys. Um, I, I talked about that at great length on, on the radio today. So if you go to my YouTube channel, Brian Craig on YouTube, and you can watch me talk about that in, in detail. I don't want to rehash everything I said earlier on this program. But um, – Someone called and, and, well, I got several calls from people today who said Kyle Rittenhouse is a racist. He was with these proud boys, and that makes him a racist. And I asked them a question. I said, um, I said, can you tell me what the proud boys have done or said yeah. that, that, that's racist? And they said, you know. And I said, I don't know, but you've called them racist, so you know. Please tell me. Now, I got this – very, very <laughs> long message um, from someone. And you can go on my YouTube comments and find the whole thing yourself. I'm not going to share the name. I don't want to call the person out since they're not here. I'm not going to call them up by name. Brian, there is no excuse for you to not know anything about the things you hold forth on. You claim to not know about the Proud Boys, and I believe you. This is a broadly established pattern in your exposition to broadly not know what you're talking about. And he goes on. And on and on. Okay. Let me just give you a little bit behind the scenes on how I do a show. Okay. Um, I know what the Proud Boys are. I know all about them. And I know more about them than most of you know. Okay. I was talking about it in detail on the show this morning. So if you go back, I um, have run into a couple of these guys at Mar-a-Lago. And, um, and I've, I talked about that and, and their involvement at the Capitol breach and everything else. Um, when th- th- just let me give you guys a little technique. When you are debating someone, okay, and they say something about someone, like this guy says, the Proud Boys are racist. And I say to him, well, tell me what they've said. Tell me what they've done. Tell me about them that's racist. And then they say, you know, you tell me. And I say, no, I don't know. But you know because you've made this claim against them, so you tell me. And then the guy hangs up. It's it, in a debate, you do better when you tr- ask the person questions and get them to explain their statements and their claims about people and individuals and issues. It's not a teachable moment where you start, well, if you look back at the history of the Proud Boys, you will see that's not how you debate. And most of the time, when you're talking with leftists, they don't know anything. All they have are talking points, and if you get beyond the talking points, they, don't, they have nowhere to go. It's like if you get a call from a telemarketer, and they have a script, and you start asking questions of the telemarketer, they don't have answers because they just have a script. That's how it is with leftists. And for example, Kyle Rittenhouse, okay? He's a kid. He's an 18-year-old kid, and this Ashley Banfield interview. She, he says, well, I'm not a racist, and I don't support the Proud Boys, and you know, they were there, and, but you're in a picture with them. You're in a picture with them. You're associated. This was Ashley Banfield. Well, this, if, if Ashley, Ashley Banfield can do that with an 18-year-old kid who doesn't have any experience, if Ashley Banfield 
did that with me, what I would say to Ashley Banfield is this. Well, wait a minute, Ashley Banfield, I remember you on NBC News, in particular on 9-11, and you were interacting with Matt Lauer on a regular basis. You were with Matt Lauer. And I'm sure she had pictures with Matt Lauer. You were working with Matt Lauer. I saw you live on television with Matt Lauer, who was one of the biggest abusers of women in the history of American television news. Uh, Does that mean that you are an abuser of women? Does that mean- Or that that you condone it? That you condone with the behavior of him because you were with him on video. I just have a still picture. There's video of you interacting with Matt Lauer. Are you guilty by association of Matt Lauer's disgusting behavior towards- Women and the abuse, and she wouldn't know where to go with that. Right, and that you you do better when you ask questions and and call someone out like that as opposed to sharing. You turn it every, around. Yeah, you, you turn it around on. It's them, a that's technique, all. but it's and it and I think right. it's an effective technique it because is. leftists don't know anything. I, the first time I learned this was when I first started doing this. Strom Thurmond was still alive, and um. And Democrat callers would often say, oh, you're the party of Strom Thurmond. And I would ask, well, what does that mean, the party? And they wouldn't they don't know. know. It's just a talking point that they heard in the in – the, in the, like, for example, today, this thing about the OK sign being a, 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 a white supremacist symbol, right? Um, the OK sign – I talk about this. Eddie Murphy, that was his signature in his movies in the 80s. Eddie Murphy at the end of Beverly Hills Cop does the OK sign. Well, and, and I had and, said in the chat this morning, and I'd said to you, if you are typing on your phone and you type the word OK, that emoji pops up. That symbol of the sign pops up as, as that you can click that and, as a replacement. And, and, so and you know obviously why? Apple thinks that's what it means, and, and, too. And you know what, Kathy? The OK sign is in the in a standard English sign language, the official American sign language. That is the symbol for OK in sign it's, language. The, the, yeah, this whole and, thing of, of it where being, did this yeah, the, where did this talking point come from that it's, all, it's, that, it's that, all BS. that the o, the OK sign is racist? I, I have no clue. It's just some made up thing that people have run with. And if Ashley Banfield had said that to me, I would have said, "Well." When was that decided? You know, exactly. You have to. What you are you know, talking about? The Ashley liberals Manfield? are good at making accusations. OK, they're good at making accusations, but they're not good at giving answers to anything. Well, they have no answers. So when they make an accusation like that, you have to turn it around on them and say, like the OK sign. You say, well, where where did that originate? When did that become a thing? Because when I was growing up, that meant okay. It still does mean and okay. And that still yeah. means okay. It still means okay. But what they do is they they so say like what somebody in one of their one of their side was in a picture and made that sign, then it would mean okay. Mm-hmm. But if somebody on the right does it, then you're a white supremacist. They pick and choose, uh, you know, the meaning uh, according to their narrative. I mean. It's really amazing. And, I, you know, they really believe this stuff. They're true believers and they're really stupid people. And they really believe the garbage that they're being fed. And they just they just chew, chew it up and spit it back out at you. Now, it's really amazing. Now, listen, we're going to take a quick break. When we get back, there is a lot more to talk about. Do not go anywhere. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. We'll be back right after this. Do you feel that you've got a great weight on your shoulders? The book from author Dr. Sophie Zamizada, The New Me, Healthy and Successful, will teach you to take back your life and health and reclaim joy. This must-read book contains the keys to changing how your brain perceives the world and includes a simple step-by-step account of how to live a healthier, happier, more productive, harmonious life. The author, Dr. Sophie Zamizada, is a healthcare professional who has a passion for helping others just like you. And now now she's assembled the perfect tool for true game-changing empowerment. In no time, your nerves and dependence on others will be a thing of the past. Prepare to reprogram your outlook. Available on Amazon in Kindle, paperback, and hardcover editions. The new me, healthy and successful, from author Dr. Sophie Zamizada. Order your copy right now. 
Have you wanted to get involved in investing but didn't know how or even where to begin? Then visit ExoticExpansion.com. ExoticExpansion.com offer financial education and tools to help users just like you grow financially. And don't worry if you're busy at work. They will send you stock signals through text and Discord. So you just follow their calls on when to buy and sell. It's that easy. They offer monthly and yearly membership levels to fit your budget. Membership includes one-on-one coaching, full-time advice, and stock calls. There's a members area where you can view their weekly picks, have access to their top 20 verified stock picks that always are updating, as well as a net worth tracker. And there's a lot more, too. ExoticExpansion.com's goal is to provide you with the education that will enable you to achieve your financial goals. ExoticExpansion.com also have an app that's available in the Android store. ExoticExpansion.com. Crypto, stocks, Discord, tech signals, long and short-term trading, value investing, options, and financial education. It's all at ExoticExpansion.com. Imagine if you could combine your love of crypto with just about any vanity or lifestyle theme. Well, now you can at StellarShop.org. StellarShop brings themes to life in cryptocurrency and is the originator of vanity and lifestyle money in the new and exciting world of cryptocurrency. Align your money with causes you care about, like dolphins and sea turtles or anything in between. From Woodstock to Medbeds, they have over 100 to choose from so you can buy, sell, trade, or swap crypto on the Stellar XLM Network. Stellar Shop also has over 20 charity themes that benefit from your usage. Grab your favorite Stellar wallet and join the revolution in the future of money through blockchain quantum finance. Stellar Shop also sets up custom-made business crypto and payment systems for any business. Get in on the crypto craze and maybe you can be the one telling that next crazy crypto story. Visit StellarShop.org today for vanity and lifestyle crypto assets. That's S-T-E E-L-L-A-R-S-H-O-P dot org. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast. Broadcasting from sunny South Florida. Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in, and it's amazing. Here we are on a holiday week, a very big holiday, Thanksgiving week, and there is so much news going on, and sadly, very little of it is good news. It really is, is you know, usually you get good news at holiday time, not, not, not this holiday, a lot of bad news out there. Now, I want to take a moment to thank all of our Patreon supporters. Thank you so much, and... If you would like to become a Patreon supporter, there's a link in the description of this and every episode. You click that link, it'll take you to our Patreon page and walk you through it and exactly what to do. And uh, we do thank all of our Patreon supporters. And our top Patreon supporters get a live on-air thank you shout-out on every episode. I want to thank Andrew and Connie, Christine, Gary, ETW, Chuck, Rich, Nick, Pamela, D, Rick, and Jacqueline. These are our top Patreon supporters, and thank you for your support. Okay, so this kangaroo committee of Liz Cheney's into the Capitol breach, they've sent subpoenas out to Roger Stone and Alex Jones. And Alex Jones released a statement yesterday, made a video yesterday. He said he is taking the fifth when they call him up there. And he went on a very long and passionate argument. Now, Mm -hmm. Alex Jones is a strange dude. He really is, but he's not stupid. And um, and he's not as outrageous as people think. He's also more responsible than you would think. And there, in, in uh, Tucker Carlson's documentary on the Capitol breach, Patriot Purge, there's a whole segment about Alex Jones. And you see Alex Jones on January 6th on his bullhorn trying to stop people from going towards the Capitol which I thought was just amazing and that Alex Jones did that. And it's also not the Alex Jones you normally see. He's, he's very, unlike these other broadcasters, he's very, very responsible. So he says when they call him in front of the committee, he's going to take the fifth because he's going to invoke his right to remain silent. And he says the reason he's going to do that is because what they do when you start talking is they twist it around, accuse you of lying. Next thing you know, they're charging you with the crime of perjury. So he says, I'm not going to get involved in that trap. I'm going to take the fifth on everything. But I'll tell you, 
them sending out subpoenas to Roger Stone and to Alex Jones shows they got nothing. That they're that they've got nothing from any of these yeah, witnesses. That's right. And the, you know, Roger Stone is a, a character, and he he likes a good PR event. And they and Alex Jones, they think is a nut. So when they're calling in Roger Stone and Alex Jones involving the Capitol breach in front of this committee, it shows that they are desperate. Well, and- when is this committee going? They've they've subpoenaed a lot of people: Kaylee McEnany, yeah. Mark Meadows. When is this going to actually start? When are we going to start hearing? The hearings have started. Oh, so but, it's not being broadcast. But um, they, they, you know, it started weeks ago. Then they take up. This is these are government workers. So we're not going to see. They took like sixty days off. We're know. not going to see this on TV. No, no. Eventually, when some of these people get get in front of the committee, it'll be on TV. Oh yeah, some it'll be on TV. But okay. but you know, this thing with the Capitol breach. We are almost a year into this. What do you think about this? We're almost a year into this. The people that they've convicted are low-level people like that lunatic Viking shaman. None of them have been charged with insurrection. No. Nope. None of them have been convicted of insurrection. And the the media and the establishment and the Democrats and these traitors like Liz Cheney, they, this is what their plan was. See, they – they think liberals and these establishment people, they're so consumed with their Trump derangement syndrome. It's hate and it's a sickness. And when, and hatred is the worst emotion of all because it has an intoxicating effect on the mind where you don't see the world clearly and you don't react rationally. Mm-hmm. And they thought that President Trump and all the president's men had organized an insurrection against the government and they were going to have – Insurrection trials of maybe a thousand people, like the Nuremberg trials. Yeah, they really and, thought it'd be like yes. that, and they th- and they thought that it wasn't just going to be regular people like the ones they're holding in the D.C. Gitmo. That even President Trump himself and other high-ranking famous people would be on trial, and this was going to be going into the midterm elections, and it was going to be MAGA on trial with these insurrections. Yeah. And this there was is- nothing organized. There was nothing planned. Well, there not nothing, not by the MAGA people. No, no exactly to to do this. And there's a lot of video of police there opening gates, opening doors, standing there chit chatting, walking in uh, to the to the room with the uh, people, and walking in and hanging out and having a conversation like it was nothing. And then you saw their videos where the, you know there was some craziness and stuff. But I don't think there was anything from our side that was organized or planned. And that's what they're having trouble. Getting to mm-hmm. and but they're going to keep using that term. Well, yeah, keep yeah. using that. They still phrase. call it an insurrection. And you know, the fact that there have been over six hundred people, around about six hundred people arrested, no one charged with insurrection. No, the attorney general is calling parents domestic terrorists at school board meetings. Right. Yeah. So this is a radical. This is a radical left attorney general. This attorney general, this radical left attorney general, who calls parents at school board meetings terrorists, domestic terrorists. Has not charged anyone with uh, with insurrection. Right. He could charge everyone with insurrection right. if he wanted to. He's the attorney general of the United States, and even as corrupt as he is, even as left as he is, yeah. he didn't do it. That's that's because those are they charges got that can't stick. Those are charges that can't stick because of the definition. He'd I love guess. to send it's charge yeah. them with insurrection, and he yeah. and even this guy. Uh, hasn't done it. That's and it. You know this country. Even the shaman who got the most time of anybody, they got him on like what vandalism, interrupting and, government business yeah, or something. Exactly. Sounds like a misdemeanor, basically, almost a very yeah. very low level crimes. So, um, you know, I'm sorry, guys. You know, the the problem with the Democrats. Democrats have a lot of problems, but one of the problems they have, Kathy, is they're always scheming. They're always scheming. You know, and I I don't understand why, but some people don't like President Trump. And I'm not being sarcastic. I love President Trump. I think he's the most likable man to ever be president of this country. You know, he's real. You know what he's like. You know what he stands for. And he's never scheming. He, You know, people don't like the way he talks. People don't like the way he reacts. At least you know what he's thinking mm-hmm. and what he's doing. You know, the, the, these Democrats are always scheming. Like I tell you, like, look at look at Biden. Biden yesterday did something that should have resulted in a major move by 
uh, the vice president of the United States to go to the cabinet, go to the American people and invoke the 25th Amendment. Everyone understands that Joe Biden has checked out to lunch. We all know this, right? Joe Biden was reading a speech yesterday at the podium and was reading the parts with inside the parentheses. He got to the end of a sentence <laughs> I saw and that. said, end of quote, the part in parentheses. And he didn't even know it. And then he just kept on going. He, uh, I saw him today. I saw him yesterday. And his doctor just not only gave him a clean bill of health, said they did a neurological exam and, and, and signed off on that, yeah. this quack doctor yeah. that Biden's had for 12 years. Um, you know, where's the media on this? And they were, they were questioning the mental fitness of President Trump. I mean, look at this guy. You know, it, I mean, does, the, the way I don't like Joe Biden. I, and I didn't like Joe Biden when he was in the Senate. He was one of the nastiest, you know, whoever the well, nasty. apparently nobody likes Joe Biden. No. Pick whoever you think is the nastiest person in, in in the Congress. Joe Biden was worse. Kamala and no worse. And and Biden, Biden, um, he was always because he was he was up there for 173 years. So he was always a senior guy who would come out and talk to the press every day about whatever happened. You know, now yeah. it's like Schumer. He's a jerk. He was always yelling. Yeah. He was always defaming people. Yeah. He was always expo- – he was just always and lying, nasty. Just lying through his teeth. He never lied about his education. Oh, yeah. He's he been lying his whole career. His speeches. Yeah. He's, if you go back, they have video of him lying about – he's always been – he gets if – you, if anybody questions him or challenges him at all – he gets in their face. Can you imagine what kind of father he was? No wonder his one son's so messed up. He, He'd get in your face and point his finger and oh, yeah. and then he lies about his his background and his education and his experience. Just the other day. He's he, just not a nice person. Two two or three days ago, Biden said that a couple years back, his his whole house in Connecticut burned down <laughs> and it, with 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 Jill inside. They had a oh they had a Lord. kitchen fire. They did have a yeah, kitchen fire. He's exaggerating. And well, that lying. was that was, I was wondering, was he lying or does he really think his whole house burnt down I think and it was just, rebuilt? This is what pathological liars do. And I had a friend in high school that was a pathological liar and it was very strange and she was a very good friend of mine and we were friends all through high school and I believed everything she told me and then I caught her in a couple really big lies and then I started to really realize how much she had lied about and people that are like that. Those lies are when you're pathological, those lies are real to you. They take a little bit of truth and then, the, or, or, or a smaller event or something they see on TV or some, you know how they are. You worked yeah. with one or something that, yes. that they see in the, in the news and they, t- they turn it into their reality. It's a personality disorder and they really believe what they're, I, th- I, you know, they really believe what they're saying is true now, and and it becomes such a habit throughout your whole life. So maybe he does really believe what he's saying is true. You they never convince know, Kathy. themselves of their lies, and even if you confront them with it, I mean, he hasn't changed at all. And just like him touching, smelling people, and this and that, he still does it to this day. Even though people have commented on it, people make th- things about it. He hasn't backed off. I mean, do you, do you think the guy ever learns his lesson or has yeah. any self perspective at seem, all? Doesn't seem to so. say, "Gee, maybe I shouldn't go around smelling people's hair mm-hmm. all the time." You know, he's 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 just as creepy as he ever was, yeah. and he's just lying like he always has. These are personality disorders that don't change. It's ingrained in them. They're born this way, like Lady Gaga says, and nothing's going to change. You know, people with personality disorders, nothing's going to change that behavior because they have no ability. To it's like a narcissist type personality. It's a personality disorder. They don't have the capability of being any other way because that's ingrained in their DNA. So mm-hmm. I think that's just the way he is. He's you pretty, know, we just got to deal with gone. him. Listen, we're going to take our last break. When we get back, there is more to talk about. Do not go anywhere. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. We'll be back right after this. Gift giving is a nice way to show how much you care. But what's even better are gifts that are personalized. At ZippyCustom.com, customize your products the way you want. They have t-shirts, hoodies, phone cases, caps, mouse pads, backpacks, items for the home, and so much more. You can customize everything using your own photographs, text, colors, frames, effects, and that's just some of the custom options. Personalization is what makes their items truly unique. Whether you're shopping for yourself or someone you care about or maybe your employees, Zippy 
Custom.com has an amazing selection that you will love, and your satisfaction is their top priority. Everything at ZippyCustom.com is of the highest quality at the best prices. Right now, they're offering 50% off your first order, and free shipping is available. That's right, free shipping. ZippyCustom.com. It's time to customize your products. ZippyCustom.com. From author Roger Schaefer comes the book COVID-26 Zombie, available on Amazon. This book was actually completed in late 2019, prior to a lot of the events that are occurring right now in today's world. This must-read book was intended to show how the 1% are in total control, and the 1% wanted everything but at a cost that was never imagined. Yet, this book imagined it all. That dream of the perfect world, according to the 1%, a world which only the 1% matter, as for the remaining humans, they would have no rights or freedom living in dystopia and under the complete control of the 1%. That didn't happen. Instead, mankind has created not one, but two new species that are Z and zombies. Z to a zombie is similar to a relationship of a dog to a human. Since fear has been used to control humans since the beginning of time, fear is the second most powerful tool to use against people. The only thing more powerful than fear is hope. Hope is the one and only thing more powerful than fear. COVID-26 Zombie from author Roger Schaefer is available on Amazon in Kindle, paperback, and audiobook. Order your copy right now. There's no doubt, today more than ever, we all need a little uplifting. Times are scary, and the world can seem lonely and frightening. But God is always present. God loves us and wants us to know He is here and always there when we need Him. The Warriors for Christ podcast seeks to uplift, edify, and encourage you to be the light and salt in a dark and tasteless world. They have new episodes weekly. Be sure to subscribe and share the Warriors for Christ podcast with your friends and family. Find the Warriors for Christ podcast podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Player FM, Stitcher, Deezer, Amazon Podcast, and on their website, warriorsforchrist.podomatic.net. That's the number four, warriorsforchrist.podomatic.net. Warriors for Christ, letting the Bible speak and teach for itself. You are listening to The Brian Craig Show Podcast. Broadcasting from sunny South Florida, Brian is joined by his wife and co-host, Kathy. Follow Brian on social media at briancraigshow.com. And now, Brian and Kathy. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host, Kathy. You know, this, this is so strange what's going on. You know, there's a big push now. It started today in the news to have... Mayor Pete be the Democrat nominee in 2024. He's polling higher than Biden. I'm polling higher than Biden, probably. He's polling higher than Kamala. And they're talking about Mayor Pete, and they're calling him this new Kennedy and the new Obama. You know, the thing about Mayor Pete, he's – remember there was that that debate. I knew Jack Kennedy. You're no Jack Kennedy to Dan yeah, Coyle. Yeah, Benson and – Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, Lloyd Benson. By the time President Kennedy came to the presidency, he had done a lot. He was a combat veteran of the Second World War. He commanded that PT boat. There's, there's yeah. a lot of, there's a, you know, a lot of people believe that uh, President Kennedy was incompetent and got his boat sunk going in front of the destroyer. There, Maybe. there is a book on President Kennedy that I read a few years back called "An Unfinished Life," mm. and uh, it's the only biography I've ever read of President Kennedy. It is very detailed, and it goes into everything that he went through to get into the Navy. And he he had, uh, you know, uh, the story always was that he had, had uh, back problems and walking problems from the PT-109 incident. He had those problems before he went in the Navy. He had many medical problems. He was in, yeah, he was in constant pain before constant he went pain. into the Navy That's and pulled right. strings. And. And uh, even if he did screw up and get his PT boat sunk, which I I I don't know people I know a lot of I doubt people that. say that he's not John McCain, but uh, yeah, he still though um, re- uh, he he was very heroic with his men that survived that incident and yeah. and, and did amazing things. It's not and, like um, the the guy that was um, the swift boat guy. <laughs> Where they, John Kerry. Came, where they all came out and said he was a traitor to the yeah, country. Yeah, the Swift, John, yeah, John Kennedy's Kerry. men mm. actually said he was a hero, and they said and that he, he was that he 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 was yeah. a guy who lived it with chronic pain, and he swam like 
what, what did he, the, the boat was sinking or something and he swam like miles and he miles. He swam to, from one to, island to another. Yeah, to get, to help, get help. And yeah. it, he was definitely. That was amazing. A, he was a war hero. So, you know, and, and listen, I know he, he had some problems, okay, with his, like Bill Clinton. I'm not, you know. Yeah, that, you he know. makes Bill Clinton look like a choir but, boy. But when they, they're talking about, they're talking about Mayor Pete in the same sentence as President Kennedy. Sickening. And there's just no, there's no comparison. By the time he got to the presidency, he had, he'd had his World War II experience. But he Brian, had, Mayor He had been Pete, in the House. He had been in the Senate. But Mayor Pete's a gay man with a kid. I mean, that's pretty heroic, I don't think, you think? I believe Mayor Pete adopted these kids <laughs> for the sole reason to have this the version of the nuclear family of the exactly. 21st century. He's no hero. And, and he believes he's like President Kennedy. And they're comparing him to Obama. Now, Obama's Ridiculous. no Kennedy because Obama was a big do nothing to Obama. Absolutely. Obama didn't accomplish anything in That's his right. And I know what you're saying. Well, what have you done, Brian? Well, I'm not running for president. And when but you <laughs> still, even though you're not running for you know, president, you've still done more than Mayor Pete. That's for sure. <laughs> you're like, you know, let me tell you. I mean, I really okay. would like somebody to tell everybody in his town where he was the mayor hates his guts. So obviously he didn't do a good you know, job in, there. In South Bend, they call him Pothole Pete because he yeah, didn't fix the they potholes. They hate him. They were yelling, screaming at him. I got our county to to pave all of the roads in our entire development here in Florida, and that was not an easy thing to do. I got in touch with a state senator, a Democrat. I got in touch with uh, our our corrupt county commissioner, mm-hmm. another Democrat, and I got our roads paved. In fact, when they when they paved the roads in our de- in our entire development, we have a very large development we live in. They started in front of our house. That's right. And I, I, I was like, wow, this is what a coincidence. And the crew came up to me and said, we are here because of you. So, so you I, got more done than him. Mayor Pete couldn't, he was the mayor and he couldn't get the potholes fixed. But this thing about him and Obama, Obama was a do nothing too. Yeah. However, however, Obama had a lot of things that Mayor Pete doesn't. He's got charisma. He's charming and he's likable. Mayor and Pete he was he was a minority, which May, was a big well, deal. Well, Mayor Pete is too, because no, but not the same. Thing. Mayor Pete is weird. He is weird. When you watch him, he is he is not likable. I can't stand him. Whatever the opposite of charming is, is what he is. He's no Obama. He's no President Kennedy. And no. if they're going to run this guy, no. God bless him. I because think that'll help us win with Trump in 2024 like no one's business. Yeah, I said a few episodes ago that he's their new darling. <laughs> they're out of their minds. Um, well, this is interesting. Before we go, I want to talk about this. Chris Cuomo, Not I don't watch his show, but I've seen recent clips and articles. He is doing some weird stuff. He's always He weird was defending. Weird. I think he's worried about his job at CNN. Yeah, they got new owners. He so. was defending Kyle's attorney, had him on the show, was kissing his ass and said that Kyle was self-defense. Now, he has a podcast or radio show. He's attacking woke people for trying to go after Thanksgiving. Oh my goodness. And he is saying that he doesn't care about the pilgrims. He doesn't care about indigenous people and what happened. It was a long time ago. And don't bring up that stuff to ruin the best holiday. He's his favorite holiday to ruin the greatest holiday. And I agree with Chris Cuomo. That stuff that happened with the pilgrims, they had a feast that lasted days and days. And it was a bringing together of cultures. And it was a beautiful thing. And we have Thanksgiving because of it. And anybody who tries to malign this holiday is, is is a jerk. And I agree with Chris on this. But he is having like... I don't know what's going on with him. All of a sudden, he sounds like a conservative. Well, you know why? He he. Uh, Chris Cuomo lost his juice. His brother was the governor. That's true. And was going to be running for president or at least be the senator from New York. And That's Chris, true. Chris Cuomo was where he is because of his brother. And now that his brother's disgraced and out, Governor Cuomo, he's got no juice anymore. And CNN, there's all these rumors. They've been they like had, Meghan they McCain used to have all these. That's connections. right. They merged with Discovery Channel. Um, which is run by Liberty Media, so you love. I don't the name. think it's Discovery Channel. I think it's it's something a company called this well, guy. The guy used to run Discovery. Oh, Channel. he used it's to like, run. That's right. It's not so, Discovery Channel. Right. He used to run Discovery That's, Channel. NBC, uh, same company owned Discovery. Yeah. Channel. So the company, this Liberty Media, is going to be running CNN, and just the name tells you a little bit about it. And they yeah. don't like CNN. They like Fox. So I think people at CNN are really worried about their jobs. And I think Chris Cuomo is trying to appeal to a more conservative audience now because he's trying to get his ratings up. 
mm-hmm. and he's trying to make himself seem irreplaceable and and trying to pe- try to appeal to a wider all of a sudden in the last week he said he's aligned himself with people on the right yeah. with Kyle Rittenhouse and now with Thanksgiving so very interesting, but I hope they all get fired. I would love to be able to go in and redo CNN. Well, they want you know to what? take it back to news and, CNN, and not politics. C- okay. And C- it would be good if they did that. CNN sets the tone for the news cycle in the liberal media. It's that influential. It's on every cable system. It's on in every doctor's office I've ever been in. You know, it's ridiculous. Um, and it's 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 just a poison place that's nothing but opinions. There's that's no news sure. over there. And the and the new guy that's going to be the boss of CNN, he's been doing these interviews on Newsmax TV yeah. talking about how he doesn't like what they do. He no. wants it to get back to news and yeah. they they are in a in a panic. But you know, if they go over there and clean house with uh, CNN and make it news again as opposed to just being opinionated programming, I think you'll see a different tone in the whole country. It'll because they set they set the tone for the MSNBC will still do their thing. But, uh, nobody but they're, cares they're, about they're, them. They're for, now, I wanted to say one thing they're, about they're fringe. They're like a fringe news network that nobody watches. Now, since it's Thanksgiving weekend, I just every year I talk about this and and, and I just want to mention this about Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, people don't realize this. Thanksgiving is a Christian holiday. It's an American Christian holiday. But it is a Christian yeah, Lincoln holiday. Lincoln set it up. Lincoln started during the Civil War, yeah. and and the story that we're taught is not true. We, what we are all taught is that the pilgrims invited the Indians over for the feast to thank them for getting them through that winter. That's not the case. The pilgrims uh, invited the uh, Indians over for the feast to proselytize to them and convert them to Christianity, and the 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 pilgrims. I don't know if that's true. Oh, yeah. The pilgrims were Puritans with the belt buckle shoes and all this stuff. And um, they they were thanking God. They were thanking Jesus for getting them through the winter, not the Indians. And uh, it, so when you sit down for your Thanksgiving dinner, it is a Christian, an American Christian, but a Christian well, holiday. I got to tell you, I, I don't think too many people sit down at Thanksgiving and think about the pilgrims. I do. The pilgrims and that's the Native Americans. They're amazing. Too much. You don't think about the pilgrims? Not, no. I not do. When I'm, I'm like Chris Cuomo. I'm not, I'm not thinking about the pil- I, I I acknowledge it. I watch the Charlie Brown special that tells the story, and they do a special on the History Channel that's very good. Um, I acknowledge that, and I like to think of it as two cultures getting together for three days, celebrating each other and thanking each other, enjoying food together. That's how I like to think of it. But I'm mostly thinking about my blessings and my family and, um, you know, being alive another year and just being grateful for everything I have. Thank- thankful for you and Emily. I don't think about the pilgrims too much. But, I do. Um, I, the pilgrims were cool. I think about the I'm pilgrims. not saying they're not cool. I'm just not, it's not on the forefront of my mind in Thanksgiving, but um you know, a weird thing yeah. about uh, Thanksgiving in in South Florida, there's we, you know, this is a very diverse community and there's a lot of immigrants in South Florida. And it's mm-hmm. amazing to me how few people do not. I mean, how many people do not celebrate Thanksgiving here? Just here. There are so many people here in Florida that do not celebrate Thanksgiving because they're not from America. No, they're immigrants. They don't grow up with it, so they don't understand yeah. it. And I'm a, I'm a little disappointed that the Black Fridays have been messed up. I, I really like going out to all the stores at midnight when they open up. We don't shop, but I like to go and watch the craziness. Not anymore now. And now they don't do that anymore. Well, because they were getting so much backlash for being open at night mm-hmm. and making people go to work. So now they'll be open at 5 a.m., which is the way it was back in the old days in the 80s and 70s. Because I remember on Black Friday getting up with my mom Every year at four o'clock and going to the mall at five. Yeah. And it was a fun thing we did. So we've been doing that. Well, what we did before COVID is um, Emily and you would go and we would sometimes go to Walmart and Best Buy like at midnight. Best Buy is the best. People get nuts at Best Buy because they and want computer deals. And that would be fun. Yeah. So now we'll have to go Friday at 5 a.m. and it's for so, all the craziness. It's so weird going to Best Buy or Walmart and it's like 1.30 in the morning and it's packed like 1.30 in the it's afternoon fun. on a Saturday. I like it, it's, but it's, you know, it is fun. They don't want to make people go to work on a holiday. They're getting a lot of heat for when it. People, listen, people that work on these Black Friday crazy hours, they're getting like time and overtime in a lot of these places. Big deal. So they're making 12 bucks an hour instead of eight. 
they, they have so many people that they have to get to work there. There's no way all those people are volunteering to be there. Walmart on a Black Friday, you know how many workers have to be there? Yeah. On a, on a, in a big Walmart, no. super Walmart, probably, no. probably 60 to well, 75. You know, I told you when I went to broadcasting school, first day, the teacher handed out dictionaries. He said, look up holiday. Yeah, I know you're working. And and he took out, he said, take out your ink pens. He says, cross out the word holiday. There are no holidays in radio. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. And I've that's worked on sure. I've worked on Christmas and New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. I've been on the air during hurricanes. And I try else. to get Brian to take the holidays off, but now you will take off Christmas, obviously. Oh yeah, I'm not gonna work on Christmas no. morning. <laughs> no. No. Listen, we're all out of time. We'll be back next time though. I'm Brian, always joined by my wife and co-host Kathy. Thanks for listening. And we will talk to you next time. Beautiful jewelry says so much about you. It says you have good taste and enjoy nice things. That you appreciate beauty as well as the world around you. The Ocean Rhyme Shop on Etsy, online at oceanrhyme.etsy.com, carry handcrafted Baruch pearl jewelry that's stunning and unique, just like you. They make gorgeous pearl pieces like earrings, bracelets, necklaces, and a whole lot more. Everything at oceanrhyme.etsy.com is lovely and sparkly, perfect for yourself or someone you care about as a gift. Artist Julia creates the most stunning pearl pieces. You will love the jewelry you buy from oceanrhyme.etsy.com. Each piece is made with care and is very special. Whether you want black pearls, golden South Sea pearls, Tahitian pearls, or freshwater pearls, you will find it at oceanrhyme.etsy.com. They have a wide variety to choose from before you shop for jewelry or gifts anywhere else. Be sure to visit oceanrhyme.etsy.com. Share the link on all of your social media so your friends can discover the shop too. oceanrhyme.etsy.com oceanrhyme.etsy.com